I'm very, very excited to bring you what I've accomplished so far on this Remington 572. And I'm just so happy that it's turning out pretty much the way I want it. If you watch my past videos on this model 572 Crow Wing Black, um, when I first uh, brought it out to you, it was uh, pretty bad shape cosmetically. Um, the mechanics were functioning fine, but I did find a couple problems with it internally, and I did fix those. But I'm just really happy on how it turned out. So let me go over what I did so far. And I want to thank the Lord that, you know, he gave me the energy to do this. Um, I'm 58 years old right now, and I have a pretty bad disease, like you guys know. And, you know, I get these little spurts once in a while that he gives me of energy, and I'm able to do certain things, but very light, light things. And that's only once in a while. That's not even that often. Um because of my disease but when I was before I got pretty severe in it I used to do all kinds of stuff I used to be able to tear things apart fix them I had my own construction business and um, you know I used to be able to do a lot of things in my younger years and if I didn't know how to do it I would figure out how to do it and do a great job <clears throat> I don't consider myself a perfectionist but I try to do the best I can and pretty much all the projects that I've done through the years have come out really good and I haven't had too many complaints let's put it that way all right just giving my pat on my back on my shoulder here um, so this is the way I got it so far as you can see the uh, forearm is done I got the um, tube magazine uh, magazine tube lug I got that pretty secured in there and it came out really nice. See that? If you remember that those threads were stripped and um, there was a few different ways I was gonna try to do it to fix it, but I actually got two part epoxy for aluminum and it works really, really well. I kind of grabbed it and shook it and pulled it and it's, it's on there really tight. So even though the threads were stripped, it actually glued itself back in there nice and it sits in there nice and you can't really tell at all that it's even been epoxied but you know you won't be able to take this off unless you break it of course um, you know if you had to replace this lug in, in the future I got everything pretty well clean and a couple of the mechanics that I found if you remember on the one of the videos was this trigger housing as you could see it was wearing up here on the shelf, which I didn't know until I opened it up. Even though it was still functioning really good, the rifle, but you know, that's not right to wear like that. So, so I did buy one online that is completely flat and not, not worn in any, in any way. It actually looks brand new. And, um, so I did replace that. I took all the, um, you know parts off the old trigger guard and put them on the new one so because this the new one only came with the housing it didn't come with any parts it wasn't really that difficult to do if you take your time you could replace all the parts but and I didn't have any special tools I just did it all by hand and a couple little screwdrivers and knocked some of the pins out and it actually it actually put back together really well so I mean it works fine um, the only thing that I didn't not do is the stock completely yet. Um, uh, I don't really like the way it's coming out. So it has to be sanded a little more. As you can see, there's a little bit more varnish here. Um, let me see if I can turn it around here for you. So see a little bit more varnish here. Oh yeah, right underneath here. So, so I got to spend a little more time sanding this. Maybe I'll get my son to do it, you know, or my stepson. <laughs> Maybe he'll do it for me. 
But um, so if I get it sanded down a little bit better, um, even this is a little rough there, say, it has to be smoothed out. And then uh, nice steel wool it, and then I'll linseed oil it, because I, I put linseed on this. And I'll put a couple coats of linseed oil, and then just spray lightly a clear coat on it, a couple uh, light clear coats, and then lightly steel wool it again. And that should come up pretty good. Should look just like this. So that's the only thing I have to do. And you can see that, that came out nice. I polished this up a little bit. Here's the new uh, trigger guard assembly right here. Safety, I put the safety on, that works fine. So it came up real nice, you know? I'm very happy with it. And again, as soon as it's done, I'll make one more last video of it so that you guys can see the the complete project. Um, I will mention to you though, since this is a crow wing black, you know, I think it's actually should be called black crow wing, but I think that kind of sounds better, but it's called crow wing black, I believe, uh, for the model made in, I think this one was made in 1958 or 59. And it is lightweight, it weighs about three and a half pounds, I think. But the only thing that's not quite original is the color of the wood. So more so the color of the wood on these models were like a golden honey um, color. It was more of like a yellow. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this came out a little dark as you could see and I didn't even stain it. All I did was linseed oil it and you could see the check green came out pretty dark but that's okay. I'm not too concerned on it. Again, it's not original uh, color. This is, of course, the receiver is not original painted. So that's that's the high temperature black paint that I put on there. Alrighty. Here's the butt plate that came out. That came out pretty nice. I left the aluminum edge. I didn't paint over that because that's the way it's supposed to be. So <clears throat> you hear from me soon. And hopefully I'll get this done in the next, you know, two to five days. So I'll, I'll get this stock completed and I'll make this other video. Okay. All right. I'm excited. Thank you so much for looking and thank you for support. Bye-bye.